Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, good evening. Let me brighten it up here a little bit. How you guys doing? Welcome to Kingdom Application Ministries, tonight's Bible study. Um, hey, hey, how you doing, Miss Gautier? We'll give it a minute, but let's, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. What's up, Brother Ben? Father, I just thank you right now for who you are, God. I thank you for your love and understanding, Father. I thank you for being our Father. Father, we bless your name tonight, God. Even as tonight, Lord, as we're at the verge of a changing of the guard of this nation, God, Father, we honor you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you are in control of all things. And Father, that you are... <laughs> You are almighty. You are omnipotent, God. You are loving. You are caring, God. You are all-knowing, God. You're long-suffering, God. And there's none to take your place, God. You are on the throne, O oh God. And Father, we just bless your holy name, God. We thank you that your justice is your fair, God. Your, your truth is, is righteous. And we just thank you, Lord for choosing us to be your children, God. Even now in this day, Lord, even as we have sinned and sinned against you alone, God. Father, we have transgressed your word, oh God. Father, we have uh, brought, we have sinned against one another, God. We have sinned against our own souls, oh God, in the name of Jesus. But Father, we ask right now for forgiveness, we thank you for bearing witness of us, oh God. We thank you for your grace, God, that understands the traps and the snares that have been set for us, oh God. We understand, glad that you understand, God, Father, that we most of the things we have done was out of iniquities, oh God. And Father, out of not just not knowing any better, oh God. And then, Lord, some of the things that we did was the fact that we did know better, but Father, we couldn't help it. It was something within us just driving us to commit these sins. And so, Father, we ask forgiveness right now. We ask that you blot out our iniquities, oh God. Father, we ask that you let the blood sever the, sever the curse right now, God. Let it separate us from the penalty of sin right now, God. Father, we just thank you right now for it, oh God. We thank you that you sent your son, oh God, Father. And he died upon the cross, Father, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, God. Father, we thank you for paying the penalty, oh God. Uh, the penalty that he did not owe, Lord. But Father, because of his obedience, oh God. Because he was obedient even unto death, oh God. You've given him all power in his hands, oh God. Power to redeem, power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free, power to heal the brokenhearted, God. And Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for being so good to us, oh Lord. We thank you tonight, Lord, for the times that you have supped with us, oh God. And so, Father, as we come tonight, Lord, even for this Bible study, Lord, we ask right now, God, that you set with us, oh God. Father, that you share your word with us, oh God. Father, write it on our hearts, Father, that we might get an understanding, oh God. Father, that we might know your truth. And we just thank you and bless you for it tonight, Lord. We thank you and bless you, Lord. Lord, even on the eve of this inaugural, God, Father, we pray for safekeeping, oh God, that there be a hedge of protection around each and every one of us, oh God, around your children, God, around your people, around the innocent, oh God, around the unsuspecting, God. And we just thank you for it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, I'm glad to see everybody on. Uh, Merv, <laughs> what up, Tate, <laughs> Melissa? Hey, uh, is there a problem with Facebook? Is something going on with that you guys know? Um, I, I, I know I'm live, but I don't see it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there's uh, anything going on with that. Hey, but anyway, I'm going to keep it rolling right where I am. Um, giving thanks and honor to God tonight. I want to, uh, before I get started, I want to say, you know, with this COVID thing going around, there's a lot of people leaving this place. And um, if you don't get a chance to uh, 
speak to them or say something to them before they go, just thank God for the time that they was in your life. Thank God for the time and the wisdom that they shared with you while they were here. Because they spent a time in your life, um, and I just, you know, that um, they spent a time in your life where you know that there is a season that was going on in your life. And so I just, just when, when something, uh, thanks Melissa, uh, there's a season going on in everybody's life. So when, when God allows somebody to be in your life for a season, for a reason, just thank God for that time that they spent with you, that time that you shared with them or they shared with you. And, you know, because we all got to leave this place one day. We all got to leave here. We don't know when it's going to be, how it's going to come. No man knows the hour, but we got to leave here. Or well, unless Jesus come home first, then we all go at the same time. Amen. We all get caught up in the rapture. Amen. That's, that's, that's what I pray anyway. Amen, amen. Well, anyway, tonight I want to pick up where I left off on last week talking about repentance. I know this is one of them subjects, but i, I got to stay here. And if you would just bear with me tonight, I'd really appreciate it. Repentance. Um, last week I was telling you about um, a lot of people want to know how to do it. But they think they know how to do it, but, <coughs> but they really don't know how. But anyway, in repentance, <coughs> I was talking about bringing an offering. So, in Leviticus chapter 5, it states, it was, uh, and I'm reading from the modern English version, it said, When he becomes guilty of one of these things, he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his guilt offering to, for, to the Lord for his sin which he has committed. A female from the flock, a lamb or a goat, for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. Now, what I was talking about in Leviticus 5 here was that one of the things that we're forgetting to do and that we don't do, and the church don't even emphasize it, is that when you're serious with God about repenting, one of the things you could do is bring him an offering. Bring God an offering. I guess you say, well, how do I bring God an offering? Give it to the priest, okay? Uh, and I, I want to I want to get into the specifics of why you should do it. Uh, because one of the things that we have done is we, we give God um, praise with our mouth. We give him praise and um, we give him... Um, Praise and, uh, oh my goodness, I got somebody asked me for some information. We give God praise, but we, we forget to give him an offering. Let me show you something here. Go with me to Luke, Luke, um, Luke the 17th chapter, okay? Luke the 17th chapter. In Luke the 17th chapter, we find this. In verse 11, there's a story about ten lepers. He says, And Jesus went to Jerusalem, and he passed between Samaria and Galilee. And he, as he entered a village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood at a distance. They lifted up their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Uh, Brother Tate, could you, uh, uh, could you text Brother Damien uh, Lee and Leo? Could you send them? my uh, Facebook information. Uh, appreciate you. Okay. So he went, he, when he, uh, I'm going to get back to it. I'm on uh, Luke 17, verse 11. Verse 13. And he said, verse 12. And it says, as he entered the village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who were lepers who stood at a distance. Okay. They lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, mercy, and master, have pity upon us. Okay. And so when he saw them, Jesus, when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. They were cleansed. They were cleansed from their leprosy. So they cried out to God for healing. God heard, Jesus heard them. 
and cleaned them. And as by faith, as they moved on the word of instruction, by faith, they went toward the priest. Go show yourself to the priest. They weren't healed yet. But as they went, they began to be cleansed. Okay? But fifth, in verse 15, and this is the key part right here. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice glorifying God and fell down on his face and his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said unto him, were not the ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Were there not any found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? See, then he said to him, rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And uh, in the King James Version, it says it made you whole. Now, what I want to tell you about this story is, it was because of his faith Everybody did the same thing. Everybody got cleansed, but because they felt entitled, they didn't think they had to go back and praise God. They called out. They said, Lord, have mercy on us. He had mercy on them. They, they just went along on their way. It's the same thing I'm talking about with this, with this repentance thing. I know they don't talk about it, but guess what? If you decide, I'll tell you, when you get serious with God and you begin to turn around, you want to act upon his word. It takes God is pleased with faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. So if you repent of your sin, the next thing you just did what everybody else did. You go to the altar and you go down there and you cry out, Lord, forgive me, forgive me for what I've done. Boom, you get up and you're done. I, I, okay, cool. But do, who do you want your life to reflect? You want to exercise your faith. And when you exercise your faith, you give God an offering on behalf for forgiving you. Amen. That's, see, we want to, oh my God, we want to, Dance like David. We wanna, we wanna praise like David's praise. We wanna sing the song, but nobody wants to give like David gave. You have, I'm telling you, you the, the, the name Kingdom Application ain't named that for no reason at all. When you begin to apply the Word of God, when you begin to apply the Word of God on your half by faith. Now you'll begin to see God move in your life. You'll begin to see him make some changes because of your faith. Yes. And do we repent for sin? Yes. He said, if you're faithful, he is faithful and just to forgive you. But how many of you want to be made whole from that thing? How many of you don't want to see the consequences of the sin? He said he will forgive you a sin. He did not say there wasn't going to be no consequences. How about if we give God an offering that just might eliminate some of the consequences, if not them all? Because guess what? It's by faith that God moves. It's by faith that he loves. It's faith that God loves. It's the faith that we have. And so by faith, when I repent for a sin, I want to bring him an offering and show that I mean business. I want to bring him an offering. How can I give him an offering? Give it, to, give it to someone you know that is a known priest of his. Like Melchizedek. You knew Melchizedek. You know, you know about Jesus. Give an offering to a priest you know that's walking up right before God. Amen. Yeah. I'll, it, give it to a priest. Just give it to him. He don't even have to know why. Just say, hey, this, this is for the Lord. And give it to him. Boom. And what he do with it? Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about it because guess why? You gave it by faith. Just like Abraham gave to Melchizedek by faith, he gave it to the one who represented God. In this offering, he tells them in Leviticus, the fifth chapter, he told them to bring the offering. Where did they bring it? They brought it to the priest. But I'm telling you today, if you want to be, look, I ain't going to be before you long tonight. If you want to be forgiven from sin, okay, and you don't want the residue of sin, just like the ten leprous men, he said, now, because this one guy came back, 
the one that came back and yelled out with a loud voice. And he was so thankful. He was so grateful. He gave him the praise. He gave him the fruit of his lips. The offering. It was his offering. It was the fruit of his lips. He gave it to Jesus because he healed him. And he was so grateful. And he did, wait a minute. And he wasn't even from the territory. He wasn't even a child of Israel, one of the children of Israel. He was a, the Bible said he was a foreigner. He said no one came back except the foreigner. We have got so entitled in church to that we are forgetting to get to the point where we're going to exercise our faith and show God that we really love him. How do we show them? We, we exercise our faith. We find it in the word and we do it. We apply it to our lives and watch God begin to change some stuff around for you. He'll change it around as long as you're applying his word. You're stepping out on faith because without faith it's impossible to please God. So when you turn in your, when you turn in from your sin, give God an offering on top of it. Not only did you repent with your lips, not only did you cry out and grab a hold to the horns of the altar, but you gave something that was dear to you. You gave him a sacrifice. You reached in your pocket and you gave God an offering. Amen. I look, you know, I look, I don't need your money. God don't need your money. But you need God to have it. Amen. If you look, if you ain't got no money, guess what? Give him the first fruits or something. I don't you growing plants, give the priest a plant or something. I don't care. Give him something but exercise your faith. Amen. Amen. That's what it's about, church. It's about it's not about what man thinks, it's about what God thinks. It's about what he thinks about you. And if you exercise your faith, guess what? He's going to hold you in higher regard. He's going to hold you. Look, because look at my servant. Look at my servant. Look at him. Not only did he repent for it, but he mean business. Because why? He gave me an offering on top of it. When you turn from your ways, when God delivers you from, from some things, give God an offering. Amen. Give him, give, give him something and say thank you. Amen. Look, that's all I got for you tonight. I want you to understand this. You know, it's these little nuggets. It's these little tangible things that we can do here on earth to show our God in heaven that we believe. What to say? <laughs> it's time has come. It's time for us to repent and believe this gospel. Now, I know this thing is going on tomorrow, this inauguration. I'm going to tell you all to be safe out there. If you ain't got to go nowhere, sit tight, sit tight, sit tight. That's all I can tell you. Because guess what? Uh, you, that, whatever go on, it go on. You don't want to be a part of the collateral of anything. So just, just sit tight if you ain't got to go nowhere. Amen? But God bless you. I'm telling you, I hope this blesses your life. Apply it and watch God do something miraculous for you. Amen? That's all I got for you tonight. Amen. If you missed it, you're going to have to catch the replay. Amen. Father, I just thank you right now for this nugget, Lord. I thank you right now, God, that you are opening up doors for you to bless us, oh God. You're showing us ways. Father, we know you want to bless us. You always want to bless your children. And Father, I thank you that you're showing us ways and avenues, oh God. Father, that we can open up the windows of heaven and get the flow from heaven to flow into our life, the blessings to flow down, that we will not have room enough to store them, God. Father, I thank you right now, even during this pandemic, your children have not missed the beat, God. Matter of fact, a lot of them have increased in their wealth, increased in their living because of you, God. And so, Father, I bless your name tonight. I thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, God. I pray right now, Father, that you... Everyone that applies this word to their life, God, Father, do the miraculous for them, oh God. Show them that you're real, God. Show them that you see their faith, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 God bless you. I'll see you again on Saturday morning. 
uh, 11.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, I'm going to go to a conference on this Saturday. So uh, it's a men's conference. It's an online conference. Uh, I haven't heard any. I don't know too much about this young man, but I think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, he was talking about restoring the mindset of men. His name is Myron Edmonds. Uh, if you go to the website, www.myronedmonds.com and do a backslash and put five ways. Uh, I'm going to be there this Saturday. Uh, it's, it's Saturday the 24th. He got some uh, guest speakers, but I like his introduction. If you go to that website, you'll see a little video he got posted there. And uh, it'll say something about what the conference is about. But what I like about he's talking about restoring masculinity to men because toxic masculinity is what's hurting a lot of women. But men have not been taught to deal with issues and problems. We've always been taught to suck it up and men don't cry and all of this. And so we are walking around toxic and our relationships are toxic because we never get help. We never seek any help. One of the things he said, he said he was teaching and preaching. He had a doctor, and he finally went and got counseling for himself. Uh, I must say I did the same thing. You know, I, I finally went and got some, I really went and sat down with a counselor a couple of years ago. And actually still got the counselor because men, we need a place to sit down and talk. We need a place to sit down and talk about the things that's going on in our lives, where there is a judgment-free zone, and you can just let it all out, man, and let it, let, it, let it be there. Because keeping that stuff inside makes, builds up the toxicity. And so I, uh, I encourage you guys, to, I'll put it, I'll tag it down in the bottom of this video I, when I put it on YouTube, and I'll post it under the church website so you can be able to find the website. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm looking to connect with leaders that are doing some things for men because one of the things I want to do is start putting some things in the place for when the men get out of jail so that they can become skilled and operate uh, as successful citizens in the community. Those who choose to that path, you know, but you got to have, we got to, we can't wait for the government we are the church. We are God's people. We are the that we are our brothers keepers. And when they come out, we need to, as a church, need to have some things in place so that they can build and support their families without going back to the old way or the way that they only way that they know how the only option. But we have got to give them some options, okay? So God bless you, and I look forward to partnering with some of you guys and, and doing that, making that happen. Uh, it's, it's, look, we can't wait on, ain't nobody, ain't nobody finna help us. We gotta help ourselves, amen? It's time for us to let go of, of Big Mama's skirt and all the rest of them, and holding on to the women's skirt. It's time for the men to step up and step out front, and so uh, it's, it's that season, okay? So God bless you, and y'all have a great day, and uh i see you on Saturday. All right, I'm Pastor Henry. This is Kingdom Application Ministry. Come, let us apply this word together. Amen. God bless you.